Hello, my name is Owen and I work for Amphibian and Reptile Conservation as an Education Officer. Within Amphibian and Reptile Conservation I work as part of a project called Snakes in the Heather and my main aim as an Education Officer is to tell people about some of the things that make snakes and lizards such fascinating animals. Before you watch this video lesson, you will need to have watched the Reptiles of the UK video. Reptiles of the UK explains some of the identifying features of the UK's reptiles and teaches you their names. For this video, we're going to learn about the life cycles of snakes and lizards using these examples from the UK. And we're also hoping that we can end the lesson understanding how these life cycles are impacted by the seasons. And that will be with a reference to biomes. Let's start by asking what is a life cycle. So a life cycle is what we're learning about today, but what is a life cycle? A life cycle is the name we give to the different stages of life for, for a living thing. So I want you to have a think about the life cycles of each of the animals pictured. And let's start by looking at the picture of the top, which is of a group of people. So what do you think our life cycle is? So we're born to our mothers and then when we're young, when we're babies, we're very, very dependent on adults to help us. And we start to get bigger and we grow from a baby into a child and we grow further and further and adults still provide lots of help until we are an adult. Then we have years of adulthood we can have children of our own and we also have a period of life that of old age. So that's the life cycle for people. But what about the animals in these pictures? Have a look at the polar bear and let's talk through the questions. And I want you to talk out loud as I am running through these questions. So for the polar bear, let's have a think. Is the polar bear born directly from a mother? Or does a, a polar bear hatch from eggs? What do you think? Call out the answers at home. Do polar bears look different when they're babies? Do they change shape at all as they grow up? Are polar bears independent when they're young? So once they're born, do they go straight off into the world by themselves? Or do they need their parents to help them survive? When do polar bears reach their adult form? When are polar bears old enough to have children of their own? What happens to polar bears when they're old? So in this example, polar bears are not hatched, they're born from a mother. They look a little bit different when they're babies, but they're actually quite a similar shape to the adult polar bears. They just get a lot bigger. They're not independent when they're young. They need their mother's milk. They need parental care. So they need people to look after them so that they can survive in the cold conditions. When do they reach adult form? They reach adult form after a number of years. Um, and that's when they're old enough to have their own young. And what happens to them when they're old? Well, most likely an old polar bear will start to be too slow to hunt or look after itself very well so it will die as a consequence of those things but what about the second picture what about the picture of the goose are geese born directly from a mother or do they hatch from eggs do geese look different when they are babies do they change shape are they independent when they are young or do they need their parents to help them survive when do they reach their adult form and when are they old enough to have their own young? And again, what happens when they're old? So well, let's think about the life cycle of a goose now. Are they born directly from a mother or are they hatched? Well, we know that birds are ha hatch from eggs. Do they look different when they're babies? Do they change shape at all as they grow up? Or have you ever seen a baby bird? Have you ever seen a chick that's recently hatched? Normally, they don't have their feathers yet quite often their eyes are closed when they're born so we know that they develop and they do change shape as they get bigger are they independent when they are young 
Well, think about geese and other birds in the nests. Their parents fly away, find food and come back to feed them. So they're not independent when they're very young. They need a lot of help from their parents to feed when they're young until they're a point when they're old enough to fly away from the nests. When do they reach their adult form? Well, we know that they have a young form. We're thinking about baby chicks. So we know at some point that they get bigger, they get old enough to fly, and then at some point when they're old enough to fly, they'll be old enough to reproduce as well when they're an adult. And what happens when they're old? Again, as an animal that lives in the wild when they're old, they might die of lots of different causes. And finally, let's look at the third picture. This one might be a bit more tricky. Have a look at the picture of the jellyfish. Are they born directly from a mother or do they hatch from eggs? Do they look different when they're babies? Are they independent when they're young or do they need their parents to help them survive? When do they reach their adult form? When are they old enough to have their own young and what happens when they're old? So jellyfish are a very different kind of animal. Are they born directly from their mother or do they hatch from eggs? Jellyfish do hatch from eggs. Do they look different as babies? Well, they look very different as babies. They change shape many times as they grow up. So they, baby jellyfish are nothing like the adult jellyfish. Lots of different forms. But the difference between the bird and the polar bear is that they are independent when they're young. So when, they are, when jellyfish are young, they just float off into the sea and they collect food independently of their parents. And when at some point, they develop, they grow, and they're old enough to reach their adult form. So now that we've talked through all those different questions, we might now have a little bit more of an idea of what a life cycle is. So let's remind ourselves, a life cycle is the different stages of life for a living thing. And as you can see from that slide that we just went through, there are lots of different stages for life of life for a living thing. From when they're very young to when they're adults, they change a lot and they develop a lot. So life cycles can be very different for different animals. Some animals may have very long life cycles and other animals might have life cycles that are only a matter of days. As an example, something like a sea turtle or a giant tortoise may have a life cycle that could take tens or even hundreds of years, whereas some kinds of insects only live for a few days. So they can be very, very different amounts of time involved in a life cycle. But although life cycles can vary the amount of time, they all involve growth they all involve development and they all involve reproduction. So have a think again about the animals. Have a think about what you think the life cycles of the animals pictured on this slide are. So they all involve growth. So they all involve a point when they are smaller or younger. They all involve development. They all change shape to a certain level, some of them more than others. And they all at some point reproduce. So now let's think about the life cycle of the UK's reptiles. And it's worth knowing that life cycles are often drawn as a circle because we will draw some of the reptile life cycles as circles in a moment. Now let's start before we do that by thinking about the start of the life cycles of reptiles, which is how they are born. So how are reptiles born? I want you to think back to the reptiles of the UK video and the reptiles that we learned about there. There are different ways in which reptiles are born and you don't need to remember all these words but it's useful to know a little bit about these different methods by which reptiles are born and the first is viviparous and what that means is bringing forth live young which have developed in the body of the parent so that's an animal that gives birth the next is oviparous and what that means is eggs are laid that complete their development and hatch outside of the parent. And the third is oviviviparous, which means that the embryos, the young, develop inside eggs, but those eggs stay inside the body of the parent and then they hatch inside the eggs, so they hatch inside the parent and then leave the parent's body that, that way. 
So there's viviparous, the animals that give birth. There's oviparous, the animals that lay eggs and the young develop in the eggs and hatch out into the world. And there's oviviviparous, that is young that develop inside eggs, but inside eggs that stay inside the parents' bodies. And when they hatch, they then leave the parent then. So let's start looking at the life cycles of the UK reptiles and let's start with the clever common lizard and I've drawn a life cycle here. Remember we said earlier they're quite often drawn as circles. So you can see that there is an adult and at the point where an adult is an adult it is old enough to reproduce. That's one of the things that makes an adult an adult. So the adults reproduce, then we have a pregnant female and the pregnant female within her, the young develop until the point where she gives birth. And then those young develop further. So we have juveniles and those juveniles develop and grow further into the adults. So it's a circle there. So that is the life cycle of the common lizard. Now let's look at the life cycle of the grass snake. So again, you have an adult and adults are old enough to reproduce, so the adults reproduce. Then you have a female that has eggs internally. Um, and the word we use for that is gravid, a gravid female. But all you need to remember is that the adults have reproduced, which means the female has the eggs inside her, the eggs that can develop. And so those eggs are laid and grass snakes will often lay their eggs in something warm, like a compost heap or a pile of leaves. Those eggs develop away from the female and she doesn't give them any more care at this point. She's, she's given them the start she can in life by, by hatching, um, by laying them somewhere that's quite secure, away from people and somewhere warm where they can develop. So they, those eggs develop. At some point they hatch into so you have the juveniles and those juveniles grow and develop into the adults. So again, you have the adult then you have the point of the eggs or the, be the, the giving birth or the eggs, you have the development, in this case it's eggs that hatch into juveniles and the juveniles grow into adults. So reproduction, development and growth in that life cycle as well. Now let's look at the life cycle of the sand lizard. Starting with the adult, the adults reproduce and again, like the grass snake, this is an oviparous animal so that means an animal that lays eggs outside of its body so the female will then when she has mated when she's reproduced she will then go and find the perfect tunnel and being the sand lizard you remember that sand lizards if you've seen the other video lessons sand lizards need sand to dig these tunnels to lay their eggs to reproduce so the female the gravid female, the female with eggs inside her, makes this tunnel, finds the perfect tunnel with the perfect conditions. Then she lays her eggs in it. And those eggs develop until they hatch. They hatch into the young, to the juveniles, and the juveniles grow and develop into the adults. So that is the life cycle of the sand lizard. So that is another animal that lays eggs. Next, let's look at the life cycle of the adder. The adults reproduce in the springtime. And then the female, the pregnant female, she is she's a, an oviviviparous animal. So what that means is that uh, the pregnant female, so what she has, is she has eggs inside of her. The young are developing inside those eggs. And then at some point, the young hatch inside those eggs and they then leave the body of the female so she gives birth to them and you can see a picture of a, a newly born adder there at the bottom those young develop and so they develop and grow juveniles develop and grow into the adults so that is the life cycle of the adder next another animal that has a very similar life cycle is the smooth snake so you have the adult and the adults reproduce and then you have the pregnant female so that's again like the adder it's a female that has eggs inside of her those eggs develop the young hatch and then she gives birth to the young 
and uh, and ejects the eggshells and things as well. Uh, and there's a picture of a, a newly hatched smooth snake. So that they develop, they grow, and they become adults. So that's the life cycle of the smooth snake. And actually, the slow worm has a similar life cycle as well. So the slow worm is a limbless lizard, as you know from our other video lessons. But the adults reproduce, and again, if you have the pregnant female, the female with eggs inside of her that develop internally until they hatch and she gives birth to them. The newly born um, slow worms develop, develop and grow, develop and grow over a couple of years until they're old enough to be reproducing themselves so until they're old enough until they are adults so that is the life cycle of the slow worm so now that we've learned about the life cycles of the UK's reptiles it's time to think about how these life cycles are impacted by the seasons so you know that we live in a part of the world with four seasons you know that we have a winter a spring a summer and an autumn and these winters do affect these life cycles. So in the winter, it's a cold time of year. And in the spring, it gets a bit warmer. In the summer, it's warmer still. And in the autumn, it starts to go cooler as we near winter once more. So we do have four seasons. Um, we live in a part of the world. We live in a biome with four distinct seasons. These seasons affect the life cycle of reptiles each year. So the adults hibernate in the winter and then they come out of hibernation in the spring and it is during the spring that the adults reproduce and the pregnant females develop their young over the summer or the eggs that have been laid by the oviparous reptiles develop over the summer until in late summer or early autumn they hatch or are born and then they feed up a bit in order to prepare themselves for the oncoming hibernation. And this happens every year. So there's more active periods and less active periods. So in spring, the adults are reproducing. The young are developing over the summer until they're hatched or are birthed. And then there's a period of continuous growth. And it is worth remembering that in this case, although this happens every year, the actual juveniles might take a couple of years until they are old enough to reproduce. But as you can see, the seasons affect the life cycle of the UK reptiles. So what is a life cycle and how do the seasons impact it? Let's revise those ideas now. A life cycle is the different stages of life for a, diff for a living thing. We know that now. We know that we've thought about the different animals. We've thought about ourselves and the polar bears as an example. And now we've looked at reptiles as well. And we know that there are different stages. We know that there are stages when they're young, when they grow, when they're adults. And we know a little bit about how the, the young develop the different ways, whether they are born or whether they are hatched from eggs. So we know what a life cycle is. It's the different stages of life for a living thing. We now know that all life cycles involve growing, involve developing and involve reproducing. And that this happens in different ways in the UK's reptiles. And we also know that all reptiles have life cycles which are based around the seasons. So adult reptiles mate in the spring, the young develop over the summer, the adult builds up reserves into the autumn in preparation for hibernation over hibernation over the winter. So let's finish with a quick quiz to test what we've learned. So I want you to say after I say the questions whether it's true or false. So young snakes are called tadpoles. Is that true or false? That one is false. Tadpoles are the names of young amphibians. True or false? So next question. A life cycle is the name of a bike race that lasts for 50 years. A life cycle is the name of a bike race that lasts for 50 years. Is that true or false? That one is false. A life cycle is the different stages of life for living things. Next question. All baby animals look exactly like their parents. 
all baby animals look exactly like their parents. Is that true or is that false? That is false. Some baby animals look quite a lot like their parents. For example, young snakes and young lizards look quite a lot like their parents. But some other animals, some insects look quite different. We look quite different from our parents as well. So it is, it's not true. So different animals might look a bit different from their parents and some might look more like their parents. It depends on the kind of animal. Next question. Oviparous is our name for egg-laying animals. Is that true or false? That one is true. And there are two kinds of reptiles that are oviparous. That is the grass snake and the sand lizard. Next question. The smooth snake lays eggs in compost heaps. That's a tricky one. The smooth snake lays eggs in compost heaps. Is that true or false? That one is false. Sometimes grass snakes lay their eggs in compost heaps because they're quite warm, safe places. But smooth snakes do not lay their eggs. Their eggs develop inside them and then the females give birth. Next question. Sand lizards lay eggs. Is that true or false? That one is true. Sand lizards lay eggs. They reproduce in the, in the springtime. They lay eggs in the late spring, which develop into the young over the summer. Next question. UK reptiles are most active in winter. UK reptiles are most active in winter. Is that true or false? Have a think. Have a think about the seasons. See if you can remember, is that true or false? That one is false. UK reptiles hibernate over the winter, becoming more active in the springtime. True or false, UK reptiles re reproduce in spring. Is that true or false? That one is true. Next question. All life cycles involve reproduction, growth and development. Is that true or false? That one is true. All life cycles do involve reproduction, growing and developing from the young into the adults. So that is the end of the lesson. So let's just check that we've learned what we wanted to learn about at the start of the lesson. So we wanted to learn about the life cycles of snakes and lizards using examples from the UK. And we've done that, so well done. We also wanted to understand that these life cycles are impacted by the seasons. And we've done that as well, so that's fantastic. Really well done. If you have any questions about what we've learned today or any questions about programs of education involving reptiles, please do not hesitate to give me an email and I popped my email address on the slide there. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Thank you.